Welcome to the course Dependent Adult Abuse for Mandatory Reporters. This course has been divided into four separate parts to make your viewing easier. By law, the State of Iowa requires all mandatory reporters to complete this approved two-hour training. In this course, we will cover the following topics. Trends and facts relating to elder and dependent adult abuse, the Iowa law with respect to elder and dependent adult abuse, understanding abuse, recognizing different types of abuse, reporting suspected abuse, how reported abuse is investigated, ways to prevent abuse, and final notes about elder dependent adult abuse. A short quiz to test your knowledge of dependent adult abuse for mandatory reporters will follow this information. You will need to pass the quiz with a score of 85% or better to successfully complete this course as required by Iowa law. Welcome to Part 1 of Dependent Adult Abuse for Mandatory Reporters. This section of the course will cover elder abuse background, its trends and facts, Iowa abuse law, and understanding abuse. Let's get started. Let's begin by looking at trends and facts about elder and dependent adult abuse. First, let's make sure that when we speak about dependent adult abuse, we are using terms correctly. By definition, an older Iowan refers to anyone 60 years of age or older. Iowa has an increasing proportion of people who are aged 60 years and older. The group aged 80 years and older is increasing more rapidly than any other age group. Iowa's proportion of older adults in the population exceeds that of the United States as a whole. In fact, Iowa ranks second in the nation with persons aged 85 and older, third in the nation with persons 75 and older, and fourth in the nation with persons 60 and older. Elder abuse is a growing and widespread problem across the country. However, because it is still largely hidden, elder abuse is grossly underreported. Estimates vary a great deal but include 1 in 20 older Americans as a victim of abuse. Only 1 in 5 instances of domestic elder abuse coming to the attention of authorities, excluding incidents of self-neglect. It is estimated that approximately 1 million elders became victims of various types of domestic elder abuse in 1996. This figure excludes both self-neglecting elders and facility abuse. If self-neglect were added, the total number of elder abuse victims would double, estimating at over 2 million individuals in the same year. Who are the abusers? The largest segment is represented by adult children of the victim, followed by spouses, then other relatives. As you can see, whether it involves abusing others or oneself, women are more likely than men to be the abuser. Of course, women also are more often in caregiving roles, which may account for the greater percentage of female abusers. So who are the victims? Most are women, but women have a longer average lifespan than men, which may account for some of the victim statistics. The median or average age of the victims was 78 years for abuse that was perpetrated by a caretaker. For self-neglect cases, the average age was 77 years. Neglect is the most common form of elder maltreatment in the community setting. Part 2 Iowa Abuse Law. The term elder abuse generally refers to the abuse, neglect, or exploitation of people aged 60 years or older. It may include physical, psychological, and or sexual abuse, material or financial exploitation, neglect, or self-neglect. The Code of Iowa will be referenced throughout this training. Chapter 235B deals directly with dependent adult abuse. 
While mandates in the code are important and provide the framework for dependent adult services in Iowa, the language contained within the code is written for the legal profession, so this training will outline the law in practical terms. Who is a dependent adult? A dependent adult refers to a person 18 years of age or older who is unable to protect his or her own interests or is unable to adequately perform or obtain services necessary to meet essential human needs as a result of a physical or mental condition which requires assistance from another or as defined by departmental rule. A caretaker refers to a related or non-related person who has the responsibility for the protection, care, or custody of a dependent adult. That responsibility may be assumed voluntarily, by contract, through employment, or by order of the court. Adult abuse does not only happen in families, but also in post-acute and long-term care facilities, hospitals, adult care settings, anywhere. When it is your duty to care for a dependent adult, you are considered a caretaker. In laying the groundwork for dependent adult services, the law stresses the need for the state to provide protection of Iowa's dependent adults. In the Dependent Adult Abuse Information Registry, the code also focuses on the right to individual privacy as well as the need for a centralized system of collecting, maintaining, and disseminating adult abuse information. The State of Iowa and Stonehill have placed their trust in you to carry out this honorable responsibility with integrity as a consummate professional. We are counting on you to protect all the residents under your care. Dependent adult abuse is a specific category of elder abuse. It is defined by any of the following as a result of the willful, negligent acts or omissions of a caretaker. Physical abuse, sexual abuse or sexual exploitation within a care facility, financial exploitation, denial or self-denial of critical care. In Iowa, Elder abuse is reported under the Dependent Adult Abuse Law, Iowa Code Chapter 235B. This law is specifically aimed at protecting dependent adults from abuse by their caretakers. Under the Dependent Adult Abuse Law, persons who believe a dependent adult is suffering from abuse by a caretaker may report their belief to the Department of Human Services. However, the Department of Inspections and Appeals is responsible for the evaluation of dependent adult abuse of residents caused by an employee of a licensed health care facility. Each department must then investigate the report and make an evaluation of the situation. To obtain the most current information, call the Iowa Department of Elder Affairs or the Department of Human Services. There are some situations which may appear to be dependent adult abuse, but according to the Iowa Code, they do not apply. 1. Refusal or deprivation of medical treatment based on religious beliefs. The practices and beliefs of some religions call for reliance on spiritual means for healing rather than medical treatment. A patient may refuse treatment based on religious grounds. Two withholding, withdrawing, or refusing medical treatment based on terminal illness when this is based upon the request of the dependent adult, their next of kin, power of attorney, or guardian. Domestic abuse in situations where the victim is not dependent as defined under the law. 4. Persons incarcerated or jailed in a penal setting. While one can make a case that a jailed person is a dependent adult, the code excludes these persons from the dependent adult abuse law. 5. Lack of means or access to means for providing care. When there is a lack of means or lack of access to care for a dependent adult, the caretaker would not be guilty of perpetrating denial of critical care. Likewise, 
Cases where a dependent adult lacks the means to care for her or himself would not be considered self-denial of critical care. Dependent adult abuse under the Code of Iowa breaks down into these categories. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, sexual exploitation if it occurs within a health care facility, financial exploitation, and denial or self-denial of critical care. We will explore each of these abuse categories in greater detail later in the course. Part 3 Understanding Abuse Why abuse occurs is a complex issue and it's one to which there are usually no concrete answers. The literature offers some theories that help increase our understanding of the causes leading to abuse. Those dominant theories include retaliation. Abuse suffered as a child and unresolved issues surrounding that abuse may result in retaliation. This is particularly true if the elderly parent continues to bait the adult child. Violence as a way of life. We live in a violent society. Levels of violence vary within families and often create a generational pattern of abuse. Unresolved conflicts. Conflicts may stem from childhood to midlife or from marital relationships. Patterns within relationships often continue without resolution. Lack of close family ties. In families where there is little or no closeness in the relationship between adult children and their parents, the sudden appearance of a dependent elderly parent can bring stress and frustration and result in abuse. Stress and frustration can occur even when there is a close family tie lack of financial resources. Families face issues such as juggling work and caregiving responsibilities. The addition of another person in the household, along with increasing costs for medical care and other services, can contribute to financial strain. In addition, public assistance programs such as SSI and Medicaid may decrease the stipend to the elderly who live with family members. Resentment of dependency. Caring for a frail older person who requires considerable assistance can be draining and overwhelming. Increased life expectancy. The dependency period of old age has significantly expanded, leaving caretakers to provide extensive home care for a longer period of time. With a decrease in the birth rate, there will be even fewer adult children to care for their elderly parents and grandparents in the future. History of mental or emotional problems. The caretaker may not be able to cope properly with the demands of caregiving. A person who is mentally or emotionally unstable may be inappropriate as a caregiver. Unemployment. Financial and emotional stress raises the level of frustration and weakens self-control, leading to abuse. History of alcohol and drug abuse. Substance abuse is frequently a factor in family violence. Alcohol suppresses inhibitions, making aggressive behavior much more likely. Environmental factors increase the risk of abuse. The following examples offer a profile of who is most likely to be a victim of abuse. Women. There are more older women than older men. Older women are less likely to resist abusive behavior and are more vulnerable to sexual abuse. Advanced age. The older the individual, the higher the risk of abuse due to increased physical and mental impairments and an inability to resist adversities. Dependent. The fact that an individual is dependent on another for their care makes them more vulnerable to abuse. Problem drinker. Alcoholism makes it difficult to provide care for oneself or another. 
Intergenerational conflict. Problems between parents and children don't always decrease over time. They may, in fact, be intensified by the increasing dependency of the parent. Internalizing the blame. Blaming oneself and failing to acknowledge that the abuser is at fault increases vulnerability. And finally, isolation. Minimal contact with others increases difficulty in abuse detection and intervention. The presence of one or more of these factors does not necessarily indicate the presence of abuse. Rather, the theories help us to understand why abuse can and does occur. Congratulations! You have completed Part 1 of Dependent Adult Abuse for Mandatory Reporters. When you're ready, continue on with Part 2. And when you have completed the entire course, you will be able to take the quiz.